Hi, Blue Marble Riders. Welcome to episode 3 of my sort of monthly Video Vault. Motorcycle videos that every rider should watch. Welcome to another short video where this week I recommend four videos with motorcycle related content that caught my eye and I'd like to share them with you. Grab a cup of your favorite brew and sit back. This could take a while. Before I start, I'll leave the links on cards at the end of the video for you to check out if you like and in the notes as well below the video description. The first video caught my eye because in the world of motorcycle reviews we are so used to seeing the same old reruns with the same bikes paired against each other. You know what I mean. The BMW S1000RR versus the Ducati V4 Panigale. Or the R1250GS versus the Multistrada. Or the Superbike Shootout with the question being the usual banal and subjective, which one is best? Sport touring bikes, though, are a genre that have been largely cast aside by manufacturers and riders alike since the appearance, success and sale figures generated by adventure bikes like the R1250GS, the V-Strums, Multistradas, Africa Twins and the like. But this first video asks the simple question that many ex-sport bike owners who can't bring themselves to tour on something with a beak often ask. Are sport touring bikes faster than sport bikes? Well, it seems like an obvious slam dunk no, but you might be surprised how the latest crop of sport touring bikes in this newly re-emerging sector fare versus a typical sport bike. I know I was. Three fairly diverse sport touring bikes, complete with their luggage, are put to the sword on a closed road and a racetrack against a superbike. All the bikes are derived from sport bikes. The stalwart of the bunch is the Everyman's 2022 Kawasaki 1000 SX. Then there's BMW's powerful S1000XR itself derived from the S1000RR. And finally Aprilia's Tuono V4. They go head to head with each other and against Kawasaki's significantly lighter and mightier 200 horsepower ZX10R Superbike. These are all different interpretations of the Sport Tourer, with some leaning to more Tourer and others, of course, to more Sport. It would have been nice to see Suzuki's latest offering in the mix, the Suzuki GSX S1000 GT, but perhaps that will come later. It's a 39-minute video, but will perhaps get you ex-Sport superbike owners enthused enough to jump off your beaked GS and back onto something that can traverse that sporty touring gap with a little more panache. Usually I don't do this, but the second video also stars Ari and Zach. It's called The Half Price Hack 2020 Dugatti Panigale V4S versus the 2005 Suzuki GSX-R1000. To use their description, how far have superbikes advanced in 15 years? What better way to find out than test the legend of the 2005 Suzuki GSX-R1000 against one of 2020's most advanced models, the Ducati Panigale V4S. Ride along with Zach and Ari from Road Trip to Lap Time Challenge as they unwind the differences between these bikes and find out how they actually stack up. Again, this is an interesting video for me which asks the question that most channels won't ask and the conclusion is interesting. With Suzuki's recent announcement that they will be leaving MotoGP at the end of this season, the gloss is wearing off the Gixxer these days. Perhaps this is one for the underdog. Okay, it's been two years. Words like Ballingeri, Halewood Heights, Dunlop, McGuinness, and comparatively lately, Hickman bring to mind the Manx Grand Prix or the Isle of Man TT. Valentino Rossi summed it up best after doing a single lap around the 37 mile circuit. He said, I did a lap of the Isle of Man and I understand why people love this because it's effing awesome. It's unbelievable. Great. But unfortunately, it's too dangerous. Sometimes riders are crazy. The Isle of Man is very difficult. If you make a mistake, maybe it's the last mistake. The Isle of Man TT is on my bucket list uh, to watch, uh, not to race in. I have a surfeit of adrenaline and a serious deficit of talent. I wouldn't last a lap. Likely, I'd be like so many others who rode, watched, or marshaled this race, a smudge in the footnotes of history. Other than perhaps the Northwest 200, it's the last race of its kind. Undoubtedly, the world's last great motorsports event, a historical remnant from a bygone era. 
Grandfathered in, rather like smoking, drinking, perhaps even motorcycles themselves, its inception today would never be sanctioned in this age of health and safety. Run since 1907, it is ranked among the most dangerous races in motorsports, with more than 250 fatalities in various events to date. How long it lasts in this age of environmental concerns, nanny state but well-intentioned condescension, is a topic for another constant debate. As of the recording of this video, it has actually claimed its latest victim, Welshman Mark Perslow, at the ultra-first Ballingary section of the 37 and three-quarter mile mountain course during practice on Wednesday. Yet, while I'd never race in it, I would defend anyone's right to ride in this the deadliest of races in the world. For those of you who don't know, or perhaps even do, here's a quick and dirty video summation of the race, its history, its allure, and of course, its reputation. It's called the Isle of Man TT, the deadliest race in the world. And to finish this month's video vault, I'd like you to watch some slightly comedic instructional footage shot in 1942 by the Canadian Army Film Unit of some motorcycle training. I've often fancied what it must have been like to have been a motorcycle dispatch rider in World War II, from ferrying homing pigeons around to dodging bullets, all the while while riding a big single Norton or a Harley or some other entirely undersprung overweight bike through the mud while being paid would likely have been daunting but come on, a little bit exciting if this overly dramatic flick is anything to go by. So this one is called 1942 Canadian Army Film Unit Motorcycle Training World War II Instructional Film. Give it a watch if you want a few chuckles. Well, that's almost it for this month, except for this little bonus treat if you like. After all we've heard about the Isle of Man TT this month, you at least deserve a ride along with Guy Martin on his Tycho Gixa while he chases down the famous Michael Dunlop around the 37 mile course on his BMW. The video is called Guy Martin vs Michael Dunlop Isle of Man TT Road Races. Yes, it's one lap, all 17 or so minutes and before you complain it's too long again and you're tired folks, the superbike riders actually do six laps. So do the math. Well folks, that really is it now. The links are in the notes below the video if you missed them on the cards. After you've watched them, let me know what you think in the comments below. And don't hesitate to recommend any video you would like to revisit or one that's entertained you. Once again, thanks for watching everyone. If this is the first time you've watched, please consider subscribing. I do product reviews, motorcycle reviews, off-road and on-road vlogs, as well as tours. Don't forget to follow me on social media, that's Instagram, Facebook and Twitter, and to like, and especially, I'm begging you here folks, subscribe. This is the Blue Mobile Rider, out.